So next, we'll talk about a normal approximation to the binomial distribution. This is going to be a handy tool that we'll use to say a little bit more about some data that are distributed in a binomial way. And so let's step through this normal approximation and how it looks. You can see here we have n equal to 10 with a probability of 0.8. That is, if we sample 10 times with a probability of 0.8, well, we would expect about eight times to have what we might call success. And that's where you see the peak of the curve here. Now what about if we sample 20 observations with the same probability p of 0.8? Now you can see the graph beginning to smooth out a little bit more. And as we might expect, we're sampling twice as much. Our peak is around 16 this time. Now, what about if we sample 50 observations, but again with the same probability of 0.8? What you'll begin to notice is that the binomial distribution ends up looking a lot like a normal distribution. And so we have, as we increase the number of samples, we have what looks like a bell-shaped curve or a normal distribution. And so as n gets larger, something interesting happens to the shape of the binomial. And that interesting thing is it becomes more normal looking. And so we can say then that if x has a binomial distribution with n trials and a probability of success p, when n is large, the distribution of x is approximately normal with a mean and standard deviation. And remember, we found these means and standard deviations in the previous slides. And so as a general rule of thumb, we'll use the normal approximation when n is so large that if n times p is greater than 10 and n times 1 minus p is greater than 10, we can use what we'll call the normal approximation. And this is going to be a helpful tool when we come to looking at binomial data. And so here's an example. This is the hazardous waste example. Remember, n equals 8 here on the left, and n equals 80 here on the right. The probability of the violation is still the same, 0.24 for both graphs. And what we notice about the graph is that this looks more normal. Uh, that is, if we were to sample 80 facilities for hazardous waste compliance, we would expect to uh, have success. That is, uh, we would issue a violation uh, for about 20 of the facilities. And so this is a way we might be able to now apply the normal approximation if we sampled 80 facilities for hazardous waste compliance. And so we're going to go through an example where we looked at some of these data, and we're going to apply the normal approximation to this binomial data. For example, uh, we're going to use some data from a survey. Uh, this survey was conducted by this group, Global Strategy Group. And they asked 603 Minnesotans if they favored expanding Minnesota's mine indu mining industry. Uh, so in total, 54% of all the Minnesotans said yes when they were asked the question, do you support mining in Minnesota? And so in our example, we're going to let x equal the number in the sample who said yes. And so we're going to estimate the probability that 350 or more of the sample support mining in Minnesota. That is, we're going to calculate whether or not 350 people in the survey said, yes, I support uh, mining in Minnesota. And so remember back to uh, those concepts around bins. So we'll first want to uh, verify whether or not the binomial applies, and then we'll check the normal approximation assumptions. So here's where we remember bins. Success in this example is, do you support mining? Failure is, do not support mining. And so that's what we'll call success and failure in this survey example. Because the population of Minnesotans is several million people, it's reasonable to assume that 603 survey respondents are independent of each other. That is to say, well, let's assume that when this group surveyed people, they weren't asking uh, the same people twice, they weren't asking even maybe members of the same family twice. Uh, there were have really truly independent data here. Our n is 603 survey respondents, and the probability of selecting an adult who agrees with the fact that mining is uh, supported in Minnesota is 0.54. And so we can use these values to determine that normal approximation. 
So again, because n times p is 603 times 0.54, that equals 326. n times 1 minus p equals 277. Those are both at least 10. So we can use the normal approximation for this example with the survey data. So we're going to do this uh, as an exercise. We're going to calculate the probability that 350 or more Minnesotans support mining using this normal approximation. And to let you know, we're going to go back to actually to the Z table for some of these calculations. And so we'll now go through and calculate these values using the normal approximation.